Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, June 19th, around noontime, Mountain Time 2022. There's a slight uptick in seismicity in the Canary Islands around Tenerife, but the big story, Northeast sees record low temperatures on Father's Day. Keep calm. It's cold out there. It's a cool start to Father's Day across parts of the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic with many areas seeing temperatures below average during the day. Dozens of record lows, and we'll get to that in just a moment. The cooler temperatures resulted from a large dip in the uh, jet stream called the Meridional Flow. Take a look at some of the potential record lows. Wheeling, West Virginia, 45. Binghamton, New York, 46. Granton, PA, 48. 53 in Trenton and 56 in New York. And it's chilly out there. Here are the unofficial record Highs and lows for the last 24 hours, and you can see a swath of records, uh, highs in the center of the U.S., but the record lows far outnumber the highs. Take a look at the Northeast and the West. Lots of record cold temperatures, well, being broken as we speak. Now, the mix of warm weather and new snow up in Glacier is going to cause avalanches. We did report on that yesterday, so the article will be linked below. World's top climate scientists told to cover up the fact that the Earth's temperature hasn't risen for the last 15 years. Well, more like 25 years, but let's talk about it. A leaked United Nations report reveals the world's temperature hasn't risen for the last 15 years. Isn't that crazy? Scientists are under pressure to explain why the warming has not exceeded 1998 levels, although they purport that the decade 2000 and 2010 was the hottest on record. <laughs> and we can see here with the UAH satellite temperatures of the global, global, lo, global lower atmosphere. Dunk twisted. Uh, we can see there has been no temperature change since about 1998. If we average the last 25 years, there is no rise in temperature. There is, however, a drought. And this drought may be coming to an end because we haven't seen monsoon uh, like this in qu many years. Many years. I've been out here seven years, and it's looking quite moist. And a lot of these uh, drought-stricken re regions in Texas, New Mexico, Utah, and so uh, Southern California here will be getting a reprieve in the next four weeks. Massive amounts of moisture coming into New Mexico, and then we have tropical systems that will probably be helping that drought out in Texas as the summer progresses. So good news for the drought monitor as precipitation is moving into the west. Dangerous heat in the plains still. And fire, weather, and flooding threats in the southwest. Isn't that weird? Flooding threats? Yeah, because the ground is so dry that when it rains just one inch, everything blows out. It happened here yesterday. We had three quarters of an inch of rain. Uh, over a period of about an hour, and, well, the road is blown out in like eight places. Now we have even more rain predicted today, but the good news is that because of all that moisture is now saturated in the ground, there will be a little bit less rapid runoff, so that's good. Dangerous heat is expected over the northern and central plains and portions of Minnesota and the northern Gulf Coast and Florida today. Heat advisories and excessive heat warnings are in effect in the southwest, critical fire weather is expected again as parts in parts of Arizona and Utah, while monsoon thunderstorms will bring a threat of flash and burn scar flooding to portions of New Mexico today. So click on your county for more info. We are in a flood watch, of course, here in the Four, four Corners region in southwest Colorado. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We have a few blot echoes in South America that could be worrisome here. A 5.1 at 141 kilometers. And here inland, a 4.1 at 271. So we could be seeing a larger quake there later today. Buckle your seat belts. Now, there was an earthquake with a magnitude of 4 northwest of Grindavik about five days ago. So let's take a look over here at Iceland and get a seismic update. You can s still see here there's a flurry of activity on the tip of the Reykjanes. This is at the Reykjanes volcano, but there has been an uptick here at the Kreisjevik volcano as well. Now, the Kreisjevik volcano is the one that erupted for about six months, um, and some name the main vent Bob, and it is still at alert level yellow. Now, moving on to the Canary Islands, where the La Palma eruption occurred and was, you know, in Tazacorte, remember that? Remember all that stuff? But looks like we have some size, a seismic uh, activity here over on Tenerife, which is the bigger island where there's more people. 
And in fact, a large 2.1 just occurring here in the middle of the ocean. This could be some seamount activity because there are under... Uh, water volcanoes here that have erupted. So we'll keep a close eye on the canaries for you as the seismicity is kicking up. Now let's take a look at space weather. All is quiet on the western front, barely in sea range for any flaring. There is no flaring happening. And quite a quiet sun as we approach solar max, almost nothing happening. Now, really cool article before we move into science about the Jetson hover bike. Now this just dropped the other day uh, June 17th, this CEO just flew the first human personal aircraft to work, and it's awesome. I suggest you watch the rest of that video because it is pretty fantastic. This is Jetson Aero, the Swedish company now taking orders for the world's first flying personal flying machine, personal flying electric vehicle, rechargeable. It reported on Friday, June 17th that the company's CEO flew the Jetson 1 craft from his home to work, saving 88% of time it would take to drive a car. It's kind of like riding to work on a motorcycle, although you just go in a straight line. Pretty awesome. Now, these are still out of range for most humans, but they cost about as much as an electric car, just around a little under 100,000 currently. But this is the first of its kind. And just like drones uh, were once $1,000, you can now get your own flying drone for under 100 bucks. So this price will come down very quickly. And, well, personal flying electric vehicles are now in the realm of possibility and exist. Now, the Chinese telescope did not find an alien signal, as we thought, <laughs> but the search does continue. Now, the China's astronomers were initiated into the search for extraterrestrial intelligence with the kind of false alarm that others in the field, like SETI, have experienced for decades. They're just newbies, and I newbie it. Newbie did. I knew it. <laughs> now, a reaffirmed anomaly could lead to innovations in the standard model in physics. This is a huge breakthrough because it basically says that we don't know anything about physics. Now, despite the reaffirmation, many other neutrino experiments have mysteriously failed to replicate the anomalous results. But an anomaly first observed in neutrino experiments in the 1990s has been reaffirmed by a new experiment and can point, could point to a new unconfirmed elementary particle, which we've spent trillions of dollars on and haven't found, or the need for a new interpretation of the standard model of physics, which means that physics could all be wrong, which is pretty much what we think. Now, astronomers unveil the most detailed map of the metal asteroid Psyche, the most detailed map yet. If you don't know a lot about asteroids, we'll just take an introductory course. Astronomers divide asteroids into three categories, carbonaceous or C-type asteroids, are the most common, and they make up 75% of the known asteroids and contain large amounts of carbon. The carbon makes them dark, and they have low albedos. That means they don't reflect a lot of light. Now, salacious, or S-type asteroids, these are the second most common type, and they make up 17% of the known asteroids and are mostly made of iron and magnesium silicates. The M- or metal-type asteroids are the rarest type of asteroid and make up just 8% of known asteroids. And they appear to contain more metal than the other asteroid types. And scientists think they're the source of iron meteorites that fall to Earth. These M-type meteorites were one of the earliest sources of iron in human history. And Psyche, or 16 Psyche, is an M-type asteroid. It's also called a dwarf planet because it's about 220 kilometers in diameter. And it's referred to as 16 Psyche because it was, in fact, the 16th minor planet ever discovered. Now, larger asteroids like Psyche are also known as minor planets. And this is an artist's interpretation 
of what we think psyche looks like. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, and the heroes that share this video. We love you. Be safe. Mm -hmm.